Here we have 2.4 examples 2. So example 3 says find the limit of this expression. And so in order to find the limit, um, you have to be very careful. You can use the graphing calculator. However, if you do use the graphing calculator, you do need to show your work on your tests. So if you do use the graphing calculator to come up with an image and then use the image to find the limit, that's fine. But include the image on your paper. Don't just write, did, used in, you did it in the calculator or used calculator, okay? You need to show me what you did in the calculator. So I am going to actually use my calculator and I'm going to plug in this function here. So I have x over um, the square root of x squared minus 49. And so then I'm gonna go to graph and that's a little too zoomed out for me. So I'm gonna zoom standard six for standard and I get this graph. So then I'm gonna draw that graph. And it, the, here's negative seven and here's seven. And so we have an asymptote going like this and like this. And then we've got another one going downward this way and that way, okay? So there's two asymptotes, actually three asymptotes to this problem. There is the um, horizontal asymptote here. And then you've got this vertical asymptote there and another vertical asymptote here, okay? And so I've used my calculator to come up with this graph. And this is good enough. As long as I see this on your paper, I can understand where you're coming up with your answer. Okay, so remember, this means you're approaching negative seven and that means from the left. So here's negative seven to the left would be over here. So if I trace my graph as I get closer and closer to the X value of negative seven, the Y value is shooting downward toward negative infinity. So this limit equals negative infinity. But we've learned earlier that whenever your limit is infinity or negative infinity, they like for you to say that the limit does not exist, okay? And so that would be the response there. Now, um, there is another way to do it. Another way to do this problem would be to have created a table. So if you don't want to use the graphing calculator or you don't want to graph it, or maybe you can't tell exactly what the graph is supposed to look like from the calculator, you can create a table. And so if we create a table, um, we'll say f of x, we got to create um, values that are to the left of negative seven, but very, 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 very close, right? And they get closer and closer and closer. So to the left here would be negative 7.1, and then negative 7.01, negative 7.001, and maybe one more, negative 7.0001. And that should eventually tell me what's happening at negative seven, okay? So if I go into my calculator and I program um, x store negative 7.1, Oh, I typed that in the wrong. So negative 7.1 store as X. There we go. And then now I'm going to type in this, this whole fraction because that's our function. So X over the square root of X squared minus 49. And it gives me the value negative 5.98. I'm just gonna round that off. Now I'm gonna do negative 7.01 store as x. And then I'm gonna go back and copy that expression. So I hit enter to copy, and then hit enter to evaluate it at this new x value. I get negative 18.73. Then negative 7.001 store as x. And then go back up my expression, hit enter to evaluate it. I get negative 59.17.
negative 7.0001 stores x. Copy my expression, evaluate it. I get negative 187.08. And so you can see the closer and closer and closer I'm getting to negative seven, the deeper and deeper this is falling into the negatives, y values, which means eventually it's going to go toward negative infinity, okay? As I keep getting, doing 0 0.00001, it's gonna get even larger and larger and larger in the negative value. So I do still get negative infinity, but we know that that means the limit does not exist. Okay, now for example four, again, we can do this in the graph or we can do this in the chart. So if you do choose to use a calculator and do it in the graph, um, you need to be able to type that in there. So what I'm going to type is the absolute value, which I'm gonna have to go to math, over to number, and there's absolute value. So absolute value of x minus seven, and then I'm going to divide that by the whole quantity x minus seven. So I have the denominator in parentheses. The top I didn't need parentheses because the bar served as its own parentheses. Now if I graph this, this is what it looks like. I have here my axes, and then over here I have the value seven, and this is negative one, and this is one. And so what you've got there is a, um, it's essentially an open circle, and then going this way, and then an open circle and going that way. So there is no defined point at the x value seven. But, and the limit doesn't exist here because on the left it's going to one thing and on the right it's going to something else. So the complete limit does not exist. But one thing you need to know now is the, if I haven't already said it, is the one-sided limits always exist, okay? Um, the only times that you will say does not exist is if it's going to infinity. And in some cases, it wants the response negative infinity and positive infinity. So you just have to be very careful um, about the directions, okay? So for this problem, as I approach positive seven from the right, I'm going this way, the y value that we see here is going to be positive one. So I know that this limit is going to equal one, okay? Now you can also find that by doing a table just like we did with example three. So if I create a table, again, this being my function, right? Um, we have to pick numbers that are close to seven to the right of seven. So that would be positive 7.1, 7.001, 7.0001, and then eventually you're getting closer and closer to seven, okay? And so let's see how we're going to plug that in the calculator. So I'm going to first say 7.1 stores X, and then I'm going to say math, go over to number and hit enter for absolute value of X, minus seven over the whole quantity x minus seven and plug that in i get one oops then do 7.01 stores x and then plug it back into that expression i get positive one again 7.001 store as x get my expression again, I get one. 7.0001 stores x, go back to the expression, and I get one. So it appears that no matter what values I plug in, the closer and closer and closer they get to seven, at least on this side of seven, right, this side here, we are approaching the y value one. So the limit does equal one. So you have two ways of showing your on paper for a test. You can one, either create the tables or two, draw the graph 
and then use the graph to determine the limit, okay? But you do have to show how you determine that limit in some way um, completely. You can't just say, did it in the calculator, and then select the answer. Or not write anything at all and just select the answer. You need to explain a little bit on how um, you figure that out. And showing me a picture like this um, will help me understand how you figure that out. Or showing me the table like this and then being able to make that determination also shows me um, that you know how to do the problem. And you could have, you can't try, you can't do direct substitution with one sided limits. So with one sided limits, you really, really need to either um, draw the graph and then do the limit visually, or you need to create that table. Okay.